So my name is Kimberly Graves. I am from Aruba HPE, um, and I'm going to uh, do a quick 10 talk on Aruba OS 8. So I've been told I kind of have to move this along. I have quite a few slides I want to go through. So I'm going to jump right in and um, just give you guys the big picture of the Aruba controller portfolio. Um, this is really just here for reference, so you can kind of see where each of the Aruba controllers falls in the spectrum in terms of how many APs, how many um, users, you know, what the speed is of, of that controller. The real thing I want to talk about is down here in this uh, kind of dotted uh, line, and that is our new um, virtual controller. So I have worked at Aruba for about eight years, and I can't tell you how many times I get the question when I'm presenting or teaching classes, when's Aruba going to have a virtual controller? When is this going to run in a VM? And a lot of it is having to do with people who want to you know, set up their own lab. They don't want to have to purchase the hardware appliance and you know, have that. Um, obviously, as we move through the de development process and get to newer versions of OSs, you know, those hardware controllers start phasing out because they can't support you know, certain operating systems. So I get this question all the time. When are we going to have a virtualized controller? So we now have a virtualized controller in the 8.x uh, product line, in the stream. So we need to talk a little bit more about the architecture, and that's what I'm going to focus on first. And then I'm going to jump into some of the features of 8.x. So you'll see here there are two ways that that virtual controller could be configured. There is something called an MM, which is a mobility master. And then there's something that's just called an MC, or a mobility controller. So that's why you've got the two different uh, boxes in there in terms of what the new components are for AOS 8. So let's compare this. I, I, how many of you are familiar with the old Aruba, I say old, but the AOS 6.x stream of operating system? OK, quite a few. So you're probably familiar with the concept of a master controller, master local architecture. Um, the master local architecture if we break out the master component of it, the master has some limitations. So it could only run on a physical appliance. So that would be um, a, a physical hardware controller. Um, we could obviously terminate APs on that, which means that all our user traffic is going to flow through that controller. Um, also, the way the master operated, it would push a partial config down to the local controllers. Local attributes like IP addressing and VLANs and, and port configuration would not be pushed down. So that's been changed in the 8.0, okay, or the 8.x, uh, because technically my presentation is based on 8.01. Um, there's some new features you know, within uh, 8.01, and there will be even new additional features in 8.1 um, coming out kind of the late spring. So, that's a huge difference now that we can push all parameters down from our master controller. In 8x, that master controller has a new name, a new term. It is mobility master, which we will, in the presentation, you'll see we'll refer to as MM. So those are some differences. The other big difference is when that configuration is pushed down to the local controllers, it's validated. So there's syntax validation to make sure that the commands we're pushing down are, are going to uh, be correct. So we, we ensure that that's not going to cause a problem. So the new term for the local controller concept in 8x is managed node. Now, this gets real confusing because I just told you that we have mobility master, which is MM. And now we have manage node, which is MN. See the difference? Yeah. It's going to be really, really fun for us as we teach these courses um, to go from an MM to an MN. Yeah, it's, it's just a, it's a real slight difference there. So the local controller concept, that idea of a controller that is going to be terminating all of our user traffic. Uh, where our APs are going to be sending all the user traffic, um, in 6x that always had to be on a physical controller. As I just mentioned, in the, in the 
uh, 8.x uh, stream of operating system. It can be a HMC, which is a hardware mobility controller, physical appliance, or it can be virtualized in a VMC. The other thing I already mentioned to you was the partial config versus the full config. So real quick, these slides are really just in here, so when you all take this presentation and have it later, you can refer to it. I'm not gonna read through all of it, but these are basically your VMC requirements um, to run the uh, OS 8 on a, a VMware machine. Real quick on licenses, um, VMC sizing and, and licensing requirements. So the different licenses are here across the top, the VMC, VA50, 250, and 1K, and basically that is the number of APs that could terminate on those virtualized controllers. And then again, number of users and hardware requirements below that. So in interest of time, I'm just gonna kinda cruise past some of these slides. Um, the mobility master sizing um, for the MM, again, for the different um, versions there, the 500, 1K, 5K, 10K, that all relates to the number of devices that we'll be managing. Um, so again, we call those devices managed devices or sometimes managed nodes. And what we're really referring to is those hardware or virtualized mobility controllers. Okay, so I want to jump right in and tell you a little bit some about some of the hierarchy. Um, so because of the new structure and the fact that we can push full config down, um, when we look at the AOS 8 interface, which you see there on the left-hand side, we have the mobility master has its own section in the hierarchy. So any configuration having to do with the mobility master is done up in that section. And then below that, we have what's called the managed network section. So here's an example of um, a kind of an enterprise, we, this is actually taken from our Sunnyvale office, which we've, about a month ago, we moved, so now we're in Santa Clara, but this is a slide from the Sunnyvale office, and it's showing the different buildings that we have there, and then the devices. So these devices, in this example, are all virtualized. So you see it says VMC, and then it has the building number, and then uh, an individual device number after that. So, the benefit of this hierarchical configuration is, and for those of you who've seen the 6.x, you'll, you'll understand the CLI configuration there on the right-hand side. Basically, this is setting up your wireless LAN SSID. So this is what was normally done between a master and local. But additionally, we then have other configuration. That's what I'm about to show you here. So from our mobility master, we have a group, so you can have multiple mobility masters. So here we have MM1, and this mobility master is gonna inherit. So the whole idea of this hierarchy is that you can do configuration at the top level, and it will inherit down to the devices below it. But then, of course, you can override. So you can either simplify your configuration by doing it at a higher level in the hierarchy, or you can come down to a lower level, whether that be like as we saw before, an individual building or an individual controller within that building, and you can override all the configuration. So things that were previously considered to be local, so local settings, <coughs> would be um, overridden. So things like IP addressing and subnetting, that would all be, uh, you know, port configuration, those would all be overrides. So I'm going to kind of quickly move ahead here. This is just a couple of slides showing you how the inheritance works. And Keith's gonna kick me off the stage. <laughs> so just flip through those. So real quick, just to show you the AOS features, the big one is clustering, okay? So um, just a quick overview of clustering and then I will leave, and that is that um, the feature here is that the APs can build multiple tunnels to different controllers. So they have a primary controller they're talking to and a standby controller. And those tunnels are active. So if we have a controller failure, we have something called hitless failover, which means that all the client session state, all the firewall, all high value sessions are all synchronized. So if we have a controller failure, 
the traffic simply moves from the AP to a different controller. And it's completely seamless to the client and to the applications. I see some clapping, there you go. Okay, so I have several more slides on clustering, which I'm gonna skip because I'm done with time. But I'll, it'll be in your presentation um, that Keith will give out to all of you. Real quick on the hit list failover, the two conditions is that you have to have what we call redundancy mode and the cluster members have to be layer two connected. And that's what gives us that hit list failover. Okay, so thanks for your time. Thank you, Kimberly. Uh, do you happen to have a course that goes along with this? Uh, yes, we happen to have a course. <laughs> It's really, it's really, I had you come up to talk about the course because we all need to learn more as much as we can. So thank yeah, you. And absolutely. see, do we need number two? One, one. Well, other than Devin, you know. One. <laughs> Thanks. You can ask me about no. that later. <laughs>